This is Bear Necessities coming at you. Uh, this is Sunday after the big trade, uh, sending Justin Fields um, over to Pittsburgh for a can of spaghetti. And so, we're <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. That's the truth. We we we'll sent them like that. Yeah, we sent them over for for a uh, for a two piece at churches. I wouldn't even. Uh, not even name brand, like not even Chip or RD. More yeah. like just, you know. Yeah, we yeah, we sent them over there for three McChickens. Great signature and, or something. I don't know. So yeah, this th this is the day after the big trade. And um <clears throat> we're just gonna give you a more um non emotional, more season as best as we can. As best as we can. But um we are uh Human. We we are human, and of course we are uh, <laughs> very very, very pissed off. <laughs> None of us have our. We, we we usually saturate the screen with bear stuff. We're yeah. not doing any of that. Not this week. Not not for a while. But <clears throat> we did make a commitment for the podcast, and we did uh, just want to put put our opinions out there. And sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong, but they're ours. And if you're watching, you're interested. So, Joe, go for it. All right. So, we obviously know that there are a lot of, you know, big gaps that the Bears still have to fill with, especially the humongous loss that we had. And now I know that, you know, a good portion of Bears fans think that this was a, a good move. And while I can sit here and say that, it may have been a good move. Um, I think that it was obviously just done about the right way. I honestly believe that it's just insane what we did not get for Justin Fields after seeing so many other quarterbacks, so many other quarterbacks, I mean, being given up, you know, or traded to other teams and the opposite teams being able to receive draft picks this year that was going around the league and that was what led us to believe that Justin Fields was going to stay with the Bears seeing all these other you know secondary quarterbacks or you know just a, a picket at that going to the Eagles for two picks this year um you know gave us the, the hope that we were hoping for and it didn't work out that way so so they were going to highlight, obviously, some of those, you know, those gaps, I guess, that the Bears still need to uh, fill, in our own opinion. Just kind of give, once again, what this podcast is all about, our own opinion on what we believe they'll be doing, they should be doing, what we would like them to see um, be done, and we'll go from there, you know. But it, it is upsetting. It is, it is very, very upsetting. Uh, Fields, we wish you nothing but the best for your future. And let's talk a little what bears need, I guess. Well, <clears throat> so as it stands, and the last video we did, uh, other than the immediate reaction video, was a video of us assuming the, dra the bears would draft Caleb Williams. Uh, yeah, that is the last that. video that, that we did. Yeah. <clears throat> and... The situation is even more dire now because at the time we had two fourth round picks. At the time, uh, we still had Justin Fields, yes. who was improving, but to the Bears at least wasn't improving enough. Um, fair shake or not, he was improving. So right now since we traded the fourth round pick <clears throat> our fourth round pick so not even like the eagles fourth round pick that we have we traded pick number 110 which is a high fourth rounder yeah um we traded that pick for keenan allen so right now assuming we draft caleb williams we have the number nine, the number 75, which is the third round. We don't have any second round picks. And we got number 122, which is the Eagles pick, which is a low fourth bottom round. third, fourth round pick. Yeah. Uh, and 
the reason why this is dire is because um, we we have Montez Sweat as one end. We've got we 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 lost Justin Jones in free agency. Surprisingly, he got I think it was three years for thirty million. Yeah. Um, so God bless him. We got um, we've got our uh, couple of day two defensive tackles, and yeah. we've got Demarcus Walker on, as the other edge, which. I think the jury's still out on if he's, you know, gonna be it. Gonna be it. Like we, like we don't know. Or just gonna um, be a playmaker, right? Mm -hmm. Like gives these guys a breather. Like Andrew Billings, we have. We got Javon Dexter and Zach Pickens. So we need one to two guys, you know, playing defensive tackle. One, one or two more guys, right? Most teams have a four man rotation. We're rocking three right now. Being that the Bears play you know, four three heavily, yeah, you know, meaning obviously they put four men at the line, three linebackers, as opposed to other teams that could go with a three four. Mm -hmm. So we need a heavy front rotation. Yeah. Exactly, and um, we've got one really, you know, one really good defensive end, and we got Demarcus Walker, who may or may not be the guy, but he is. Making eight and a half million dollars next year or yeah. this year, and so we're short on D line. Our O line might be mar. It's it's deeper than what it was last year, but we're we're rolling with a marginally better line that we haven't improved yet on the offensive side, and a, and we're drafting a rookie quarterback. That that's like Caleb Williams doesn't have the escapability that Justin Fields has, so he's gonna have to be in the pocket with you know not the offensive line I would have wanted, no. but um, yeah, if you want to talk about well to highlight basically off of that you know we got let's talk on one side of the ball. We'll, you know, hit up on the defense since that's what you kind of talked about a little bit. You know, on the defensive side of the ball, obviously we got some gaps to fill. They've done a very strong this uh, free agency on going with the secondary. You know, we've signed a couple safeties. We've signed our corners. We even got some more bios as a husband. That's going to be cool. Someone else is going to be on TV yeah. <laughs> for at least for us. So, I mean, we, we signed the secondary. Our linebackers look nice. Like we've mentioned, obviously, you know, the the D line itself is gonna have to get strong. There's always that question on the defensive edge, which leads us to, you know, the number nine pick. And we've talked about and I think we're both in agreement on that number nine pick may be traded away. I would not be surprised if he trades away the number nine pick to get more picks this year. I know you've mentioned that. Um I think I heavily believe in that. And it's unfortunate because had you had kept the quarterback you did have already, that number nine pick you could have used for either one of the top two offensive linemen in the draft or potentially probably the number one um, mm -hmm. defensive player, top player in this draft in Dallas Turner coming out of Alabama. So th that's going to be kind of shaky. Let's, you know, potentially, I mean, cool right they keep the number nine pick and they are able to make that pick that's great for now for today hoping that it, it have an outstanding 2024 season um but i don't know I, i'm in agreement you know and i don't know if they're going to keep the number nine pick i don't know what pose is going to do anymore i think we you know we've all been kind of just sidetracked but what has happened not only in the justin fields trade but also in the keenan allen pickup um I, I didn't see that coming i don't know you saw that coming so i mean once again guys i know that this clearly is just our opinion on a lot of things and um we'll see what happens when it comes to the number nine pick on the offensive side of the ball they signed quite a good group of offensive linemen in my opinion veteran linemen we have 
a few of them that play multiple positions or that have played multiple positions. We went and got our center out of Los Angeles that, you know, has played in front of um, Stafford over there and, you know, has played for potentially a, a, a good, I would call them, in my opinion, a championship caliber team. They're in the playoff runnings, you know, stuff like that. So these guys, they brought in the offensive linemen from the Bills. They brought in an offensive lineman from San Francisco. Now they got this guy from Los Angeles. I like it because to me it shows depth. It shows um, that veteran outlook that we're looking for. It shows that, you know, we, we're bringing in some guys that just – have been around the game for a little bit and not only around the game but are just playoff caliber players that you know know what it is to play past the regular season and are able to in my opinion kind of mold some of the younger guys that needed help last year so i think that our offensive line has grown a little stronger has the potential to grow stronger depending on the draft but once again that all plays you know, a big role on that number nine, in my opinion. You know, do we go with a third wide receiver, which is another gap that needs to be filled? Or do we just see what's available when the third round comes or our late fourth rounder comes, right? Do we see what's available out there that we can potentially fill at a slot? I don't know if you want to go kind of into, um, I wanted to go into what's available out there for us, if that's, Something you wanted to talk about as far as, you know, what we've been highlighting, filling it, some of these gaps? Um, well, in my opinion, I don't. Uh, it looks like we have a lot of salary cap um, left. And uh, in my opinion, we, we, we don't. So any anybody we pick up would be value type guys, you know, one year deals. Uh, <clears throat> And unfortunately, um, my outlook for the team is kind of negative right now because we don't have the amount of picks to fill in the gaps past this season and going into the 2025 season. Like that we were talking about it before we started filming right now that of all these different guys that are that we're gonna have to either extend or fill or, or backfill for. And we don't have the picks this year to do that. And we would have to hit on all of our first three round picks, uh, or all of our picks in the first three rounds next year, because once you get to round four, round five, those are depth guys. So they're, they're not expected to be starters. Another guy that we haven't even touched on is Tevin Jenkins. We got to figure out if we're going to extend him or not. Mm -hmm. But once again, he's a guy that, couldn't stay healthy last year or his whole career. And if he goes down, you know, what's the line look like then? Tevin Jenkins, who we have to figure out who we're going to extend. And Nate Davis, even when he played last year, which he, he had spots where he didn't, he wasn't performing up to the level that he needed to or that we needed him to. Yeah. Um, our center seems uh, he was like number 17th ranked by Pro Football Focus. Uh, so we relied on value for offensive lines, no, or for offensive line, no doubt. But we do not have the marquee uh, level or type of guy on there that's going to doubt. You know, we don't have a Jason Kelsey. We don't have a, you know, one of these studs on there that can solidify you know that part of the line we, we just don't have it and we know from watching Justin Fields the last three years that if you get interior pressure put on you as a quarterback like you could step on in the like you could step up the pocket step up in the pocket on edge pressure but you your hands are tied on interior pressure yeah. and we how is Caleb Williams or any quarterback going to deal with that on a consistent basis? But all that is besides the point, what is still out there? Um, and the market's moved a lot. But in, in my opinion, 
we're, we're not going to sign, you know, a Mike Williams or, or whoever, like, whoever the top 10 wide receivers are out there left in free agency, we're not signing those guys. No. And a lot of people think that we have all this money in the cap and we don't mm -hmm. because we still got to sign our picks. The salary cap uh, hasn't even been adjusted. Like we, we, we got to pay Keenan Allen, right? Yeah. X amount of money. People are looking at that. Got to hope that you can expand a DJ more to, a, you know, re restructure his contract. That'd be nice. Right. Because like, look, let me go over all, like, <laughs> this is hysterical. Because we, we just don't have the picks to backfill any of this. Like, So right now our quarterback room is Tyson Badgett and Brett Ripien. <laughs> we got Swift and Roshan Johnson as running backs okay. Khalil Herbert is gone next year. Okay, So that's our running back room after this season. Wide receiver core, it's Keenan Allen. We either, we either make him a bear for a while, make him a bear for, you know, extend him for another year or two and spread out that cap hit that's yeah. $23 million. Which is what we're praying for right now. Or, huh. or he's gone, right? And then even if he, we extend him, we're relying on a 31-year-old wide receiver to be, to be worth the extension in 2025 at least. Or he's gone, right? We 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 don't have DJ Moore past 2025. Bayless Jones has been a bust. Tyler Scott's a fourth round pick. We he's our number three wide receiver right now. Yeah, he, he did nothing last year. No, hopefully um, he could play a slot. You know, Colin Johnson, nothing. I don't even I don't even know who Nasimba Webster is. We signed Dante Pettis, but not to play wide receiver. He's our punt returner. Yeah. Equinemius St. Brown, uh, you know, I, would, I wish he was his brother. Uh, Cole Komet is the only tight end that we have. Well, no, Everett is signed for 24 and 25. Yeah. So we're reasonably solid at tight end. Yeah. And our third tight end is probably going to be uh, Mercedes Lewis or a guy like that, a veteran dude. Yeah. Probably a blocker because... I don't remember watching Gerald Everett be really effective in blocking at uh, Los Angeles. But he is a better blocker than what we do have. <clears throat> but, yeah, not as great. Then we got, uh, you know, we already went over the defense. The, 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 the defense, the, yeah. We, we already went over the defense. The back seven of the Bears is top five in the league, in my opinion. But – that gets exposed really quick if you don't generate pressure with the D-line. Yeah. Um, also, let me just hit up this, you know, get your uh, go mind it. going. But, you know, with the wide receivers that are out there, I got some names on here. Potential one-year signings. I don't know if you would agree, but, you know, we talked about they'd have to be a one-year signing, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what is an Odell Beckham? looking for i don't know something you know like that what is a to your contract what is a randall cobb looking at right mm -hmm. what is a uh even Allen robinson who got released you know i mean i know he's up there in age but i mean even if you bring him back to chicago that played here before you know well those are the signings that so you're just gonna have to do those are those like one years that you I, know i don't want valdez scanley jr you know yeah. no don't bring Mr. Drop Balls over here. Not drop Balls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that. We don't need that. No. And a lot of these other guys, you know, I mean, Josh Reynolds is out there, but he's probably looking for a two, three-year deal. I think, I mean, I've heard about the Bears probably trying to go get him right. Um, in my opinion, I think they need a slot. And I just don't see any of these guys that I named out unless there is a Tyler Boyd. But Tyler Boyd, you know, who has been the third um, wide receiver for the last couple of years in mm -hmm. the Cincinnati Bengals, I just think he's looking for something a little bit longer. You yeah. know, and I don't know if the Bears, once again, have the money to do that. Yeah, the problem isn't next year, it's this year. Yeah. But 
The only way that they cover what they need to cover now, assuming that they draft Caleb Williams, would be to trade out of the first round completely and get you a, a second and a third or whatever yeah. you can get. For that number nine. For that number nine, but then you're missing out on and and you know, an elite stud left tackle. You're missing out on one of the top four wide receivers in the deepest wide receiver draft class in in quite a while. Yeah. You know, you're looking at one of these guys that are projecting in the second round, which I get it's a deep class, but you know, you need a guy to basically be ready to step in for Keenan Allen after we assume that he's not going to be here next year. Yeah. And are you going to find that in the second round? You can. When was the last time we drafted a wide receiver in the first two rounds and it worked out? I don't even bring that up. <laughs> we drafted White a couple of years ago and what? Yeah, he yeah. was out. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> good job. You know, we so Caleb Williams is going to need people to throw to, right? You know, we're and if we do that, we're not. You know, we're not drafting an elite. You know, stud defensive end, which it would help if we drafted one because if we sign a stud defensive end either this year or next year, if we those guys cost twenty three million dollars. Now you're paying Sweat and whoever that guy is. Yeah. A combined upwards of fifty million. Yeah. Not to mention, do we have an above average three technique on the D line right now? Mm-hmm. Do we have that? Mm-hmm. I don't know. And I understand that people like that people like uh what's his name? On the defensive line. People like Javon Dexter that he played well, but he played well when one sweat was there, right? Like, yeah. like, it, is he going to continue to improve? Um, if sweat goes down, is he going to be able to, you know, continue making that step? Or is he just improving because he's got elite help right next to him? Yeah. So, and we don't have the draft picks to, 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 it's just the move puts a strain on, everywhere else because now we have to rely on value in important places and we can't get our stud guys like our offensive line we've got one above average one above average clear-cut offensive lineman and that's our second year player going into now yeah that's our right tackle and that's it Uh, I say we'll see what these vets you know bring into the table you know, obviously a lot of them are going to, uh, a couple of them, not a lot of them, right? A few of these vets are, are role players that were role players coming in. You know, they can fill the gap, give you a breather in, you know, a guard spot or a tackle spot. Um, so I know that they have that, but you're right about as far as the fact that, you know, we don't have those potential players like that that are there for most of the game. I mean, so we like we got to basically either trade down and not get get elite talent and go for quantity as opposed to quality or we got one shot with one player and we pick who that is and you know try to roll through like as it stands right now we're the third best team in in our own division yeah that's it yeah and somehow Caleb Williams has to come in here and deal with that and I would rather our strengths be on the offensive line like give the QB a chance whoever that is but we don't have that Um, we've got value guys we've got we've got you know probably about seven eight of those guys Mm -hmm. but if they're going against you know elite D linemen they're going to get exposed that's what I believe you know average is good until average faces above average. You know, it, it just is what it is. Yeah. So, you know, plus if Keenan Allen, if, if like we're one injury away in the wide receiver room right now. Oh, yeah. To being in the same position we were last year. Last year, yeah. 
back to one wide receiver and everybody knows and everybody's going to double them, whichever one, you know, and that's just that. So, um, yeah, so it, it's just, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to see what, like, I expect fully for them to trade down to the bottom of the first round or completely out of the first round, which is really unfortunate because this is your chance to get a generational type. There's, there's a bunch of really good wide receivers in this class. Yes. And we're going to miss out on one of them because our GM wanted his own quarterback, which is, you know, it is what it is. We should have got, like, if we knew that we were going to do this, we should have gotten rid of Justin Fields at the trade deadline last year when half the league's quarterbacks were out. You would have rolled with Badgett. You probably would have had a higher pick than number nine, you know, because we probably wouldn't have finished as well as we did finish with Justin. And, I mean, you would have had the picks that you wanted. You know, I mean, did I don't know that we really focus on, hey, if Justin can beat Green Bay in our last game of the season, we'll keep Justin. You know, was that really the mindset going into this? Like, what's crazy? Off season? If he throws for 350 and yeah. four touchdowns against Green Bay and gets them out of the playoffs. We probably would have not been having this conversation. We probably today. wouldn't even be having this conversation. Yeah. And. You know, it, it's it's spilled milk at this point. It is what it is. Well, I also love what, you know, I mean, the potential of Poe's, quote-unquote, doing right by Justin by sending him to a team where he can mold behind a Russell Wilson and, you know, potentially be the future quarterback of that organization. Um, it hurts us. Because we get a six-round pick next year that potentially could turn into a fourth round. But, I mean, the Steelers are, you know, I mean, it's just, I don't see it happening. I don't know. And the thing is, once again, we're talking about next year and we're not even there yet. Yeah, yeah we, we need the help this year. So, let's, uh, let, let's go over something. After... We missed out on compensation for the number one pick overall. And given everything that we've already talked about and discussed on camera and off camera, is it a total epic fail if the Bears don't make the playoffs in 2024? I don't see them making the playoffs. I don't I mean, see them making the playoffs. I, I don't, don't either. I don't. I don't see them making the playoffs. You know, the kid is not. This, this kid is not some kind of Superman. And even if he is, we've, in our opinion, haven't potentially put the correct players around him. Yeah, we got good free agents. We'll talk about that later. But we have question marks on the old line. And as we've mentioned, one player goes down. One player goes down. Is this kid going to, you know, this ain't college, guys, right? Quarterbacks don't come into the NFL league and throw, you know, for 48 points and, and you know, blow out teams and stuff like that. This ain't college. You're not running for, I mean, you're not combining for 400 yards, passing and rushing. You're not throwing for six touchdowns or five touchdowns. You're, you're just not doing that in the pros. You're not. Congrats if you throw for two touchdowns, you know? Yeah, you're just not doing that. So, yeah. I don't see it. Yeah. It. So, the Bears went 7-10 and 10 last year, All right? Um, now, all the people that wanted the Bears to draft a quarterback, these are the issues that that, that stance takes now because guess what? We don't have the picks now that we would have got if we would have traded that pick away, right? So we don't – on offense, what is our offensive core? DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, the quarterback, the right tackle. Swift. Swift, if he stays healthy, which yeah. he's had one healthy year his whole career. And our tight ends, I would argue. Our, our tight – Cole Komet. I would, I would yeah. argue that our tight ends, if, if they could get a good report. So – 
Uh, but there's, there's, other than the right tackle, there's no offensive line. But I've already talked about that. So let's go over, um, <clears throat> like, are we beating Green Bay? Oh, they've got wide receivers, young wide receivers. They're going to get better. Jordan Love is going to get better. Yes, he is. Um, they've got an offensive coordinator that actually knows how to call his pl- that actually knows how to call plays, and they just signed Josh Jacobs, uh, who's going to be. I mean, that's going to. That, I mean, good luck. Are we um, beating Detroit? They almost be. It, it, if their coach would have taken points, they would have been in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And I don't know if they win. Yeah. But you know what? They would end up going to AFC was going to win this year. Well, yeah. well, I'm just saying, guess what? Detroit, let's say they take the points yeah, and they yeah. don't play fantasy football oh, out yeah. there. Oh, yeah. They probably beat San Francisco. Yeah. And they play against a team that they had already beaten. Yes. Week one. Yeah. Which I know the playoffs are a different thing. But I'm just saying, they're not going in there wondering if they can win. They're going in there saying, we won. Like, we beat these guys already. Yeah. You know, so. I honestly the, feel that we're going to just, you know, be a third. Like I think said, we're going to be the best the third place team in the league. Ahead of the Vikings. Yeah. And maybe we beat them. We don't know. We don't. We got Addison. You know, they got Addison, Jefferson. They've got. They got a squad, you know, when Hawkinson comes back in a second half like that, that is a tough team. Yeah, yeah they're going to have a rookie quarterback, but guess what? We will too. Yeah. yeah. You know, we got to play six, ga- yeah, I mean, they six lost games two, against those guys. They lost the two defensive edges. Yeah. But, I mean, we're right there with them on that part. Right. You yeah. know. So, it's just like, like, what are we going to go and, and, and like, I say if we play Detroit and Green Bay, if we go one and three, that's a win. And who are we beating? Like, I just don't understand. It's like this, okay? The people that are pounding the table for Caleb Williams, right? And there's been polls done. There's been, uh, you know, now, not GM polls, but voting polls done. Mm-hmm. And it's 50-50. You were either for fields or drafting a quarterback. Yeah. Um, the 50% that are on the drafting a quarterback side, right, say that Justin is trash, Justin didn't do enough, and he's a backup quarterback. There's people around the league saying Pittsburgh fleeced us and that fields, if he's backing up at Pittsburgh, is automatically the best backup in the league. Oh, yeah. Automatically, without a for doubt. Sure. Which means he could start for a lot of teams right now. I mean, I'm trying to think about so, anybody else in the league that's uh, <laughs> such a good backup. Nobody. Even so, the Eagles <clears throat> want him. So it's, it's like this, right? Um, just if the Bear, you know, if, if the Caleb guys are like, oh, well, you know, he's a, he's a generational talent. A field wasn't nothing. And, you know, well, okay, then. Let's take your stance. Badgent is a backup, bona fide backup. Yeah. And Fields, according to you, is a backup. And we got seven wins with those guys last year. If Caleb is a generational talent that you say that he is, then I need 9, 10, 11 wins. Oh, yeah. Point blank. Yeah. And I don't want to hear, you know, Oh, he he's a he's in his first year. Well, generational talents win fast. Very fast. Generational talents do that, especially when they have Keenan Allen and DJ Moore. Yes. And Swift. They yes. win with those guys. Yes. You know, it it's so if he's the guy that you say he is, we need nine, ten, eleven wins, we need to make the playoffs. We do. And if we don't make the playoffs, we don't have the type of roster, the type of core in place past 2025 or even this year to, to you know, capitalize on the five-year quarterback window. Because if you thought this was a circus, if you thought that this was a circus and would, would all 
I mean, everyone knows what happened. Yeah. What do you think Caleb Williams' team is going to be like? And by team, I mean his uh, his agent and whoever or whatever situation he's got going on. His father. Yeah. <laughs> what did the guy hasn't even snapped one not one snap in the NFL is not under contract right now. We couldn't even get him in the building for his own pro day. We couldn't even get him to we, we couldn't even get our, our our doctors to look at him. How do you think that extension is gonna be? Mm-hmm. Like he's gonna either want to break the bank and kill the team. And get sixty five by that point million a year or whatever it's going to be some crazy number seventy million yeah um and you know or what we we draft someone else congratulations to Kirk Cousins by the way yeah for breaking the bank and ATL <laughs> dude <laughs> I mean that team's going to be good next year yeah, yeah that's one of those teams where yeah yeah, yeah. like. They, they did it right. But, but it, like, by the time he's ready to contend and by the time he's going to grow into his own, he's not going to have, he's, he's not gonna have the, 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 the talent around him to capitalize. Like, I don't know if we win a Super Bowl in these next four or five years. And if we don't, it's a bust. It's, I mean, it, it, this is all we're talking about on behalf of the fact that, you know, what we see, what we hear around the league. You know about his his uh his character, right? Mm-hmm. Because I see uh young Patrick Mahomes who is constantly reconstructing his contract. Mm-hmm. You know, and that to me speaks humility mm-hmm. because you have a quarterback who is probably worthy of proved it, right? Making X amount of dollars. But he is, you know, to an extent, right? I mean, I know he's getting paid, but to an extent, he you see him reconstructing his contract again for the better of the team because in his mind, he's all like, dude, I want to go get the next one. Mm-hmm. I want to go get the next one, you know? And, and I'm trying to pass a Tom Brady. And Tom Brady did the same thing. Exactly. Tom Brady never made that much money on the field, right? He, on the he, field, he, yeah, yeah. He made his money off the field mostly. Yes, yes. But he always tried to, to have talent around him so that way they can compete every year. And that's what exactly. it takes. That's why Peyton Manning only won two Super Bowls. And that last one, he didn't even, like, he got the ring, but did he win it? Yeah. No, the defense did. Yeah. So. On oh, Denver, of course. Yeah. So, you know, but he always was top paid. And, you know, so he ends yeah. up, you know, with a top heavy team that, for the most part, never, you know, with the exception of a couple of years, they didn't. They weren't going past New England, yeah. you know. So you're just um, hoping this kid, you know, would grow and mature a little bit and, and, and you know, humble himself to the point where, if, yeah, you know, right. if this is going to happen, then that's what you're hoping for is that he does humble himself, that he tells his supporting group to just, you know, hey, take a step back or two. And, and you know, if we're going to compete every year, then that's very important. Like... One one final thing, and I think this yeah. is pretty sure. Like, I'm pretty certain that offensive coordinator is putting his stamp on the offense right now. Yeah. If you look at Seattle's offense last year, they're running a lot of two tight end sets. Um, and so what do we get? We get a six million dollar backup tight end who's going to be playing a lot, especially in this system. I don't know if we're keeping a blasting game the fullback because Seattle never really had a fullback. No. Um, they ran a lot with the two running backs. You know, and it's looking like that for us with Khalil and Swift. Right. And so, you know, the offensive coordinator signing a guy like Gerald Everett, signing a guy like uh, Swift, and then you look at the wide receivers. Now, I'm not saying that Keenan Allen is DJ Metcalf. And to be honest, I'll flip that around. I'm not even sure if Metcalf is Keenan Allen because Metcalf is one of those physical freaks, but, yeah. you know, what's he done with that? Uh, I think Keenan Allen has had the more consistent career anyway. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, the tall, long guy that could win contested catches, that guy is Keenan Allen. Yeah. 
here and yeah, DJ yeah. Metcalf there. Yeah. And then D, uh, DJ Moore is essentially, you know, a more talented Tyler Lockett. Way more talented. So, you know, he he's trying to replicate what he did in Seattle. For three years. For three years. Except that... Um, I don't know much about him developing young quarterbacks. I know more about him, you know, fine tuning veteran guys. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe in the comments you could uh, educate me. But it it seems as though, you know, this offensive coordinator we 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 just drafted a running back last year, but we spend twenty four million dollars over the course of the next three years for DeAndre Swift. $8 million this year. We sign a $6 million tight end. That's $14 million that we might have could have used elsewhere. You know, there's guys in this draft that we could have signed that were cheaper. I mean, Roshan Johnson is is, is a good back. Yes. Um, so that's that's kind of like where, what, what I see. Now, do I hate the Swift move? I mean, I think it's 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 a good move. Do I do I love it? No. Um, Gerald Everett, I think he's been okay. He's, I think he's twenty nine or thirty years old, but you know we're not asking him to be out there all the time. Uh, I don't know. What do you think about the Seattle connection? Though? I you know would agree with you as far as you know what I see with the signings. Um, as far as you know, free agency signings go. Do I like the Swift move? I would agree. I, I I would have had one other probably player in mind that I would have tried to pick up. I think you know, and you would agree that you had your own opinion. Um, but we brought Swift over, and what he brings to the table is going to be great for us. I'm hoping for. I like the ever signing. I really like the ever signing. I believe ever is a lot better than Tunyon. That's for oh, sure. Yeah. So I mean, if you take this two, if we're arguing those two, right? Right then and there itself, I like the Everett signing. I think it allows Cole Komet to potentially even step out to be that WR3 at sometimes, right? If they're running a two tight end, yeah, you know, on. they're going to be able to, you know, exactly. And that gives us, you know, another, that'll give a young quarterback coming into the league another option, another read. Uh, and, and like I said, in my opinion, I believe that Gerald Everett is a better tight end, a better uh, route runner, a better catcher than Tunyon was. So I think that we upgraded on that part. Yeah. Um, you guys heard me state earlier with the offensive line. I, I believe that the offensive line is, is building up to potentially be a uh, good offensive line. We'll see what happens. I like the signings. I like, I like the veteran signings. But that's just for this year. You know, we could talk about next year and so on and so forth. Like I said, I like the veteran signings. I believe that they'll help mold the younger core. You know, you bring in guys who compete in playoff games. You bring in guys who know what it is to have winning records so they can uh, mentor these younger guys. So I like our signings for the most part. We're talking about that. You know, are they the greatest? Well, they, they can be arguably, you know, they, they can be argued depending on what your opinion is, you know. So let us know in the comments. Like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Lefty and Joe, Bare Necessities, signing off. Peace.